Welcome back to the four main stages of SOLIDWORKS MBD. In the previous video, we discussed many useful techniques and methods for defining a model in three dimensions. In this video, we'll be discussing part two, which covers organizational techniques that will get our model prepared for its 3D PDF debut. To follow along with part two, please download the model provided below. To start, let's discuss some terminology that is important to correctly organizing your PMI. The annotation views which were created in part 1 are the view planes in which your product manufacturing information is assigned to. The annotation will always lay flat to the plane it is assigned to, but keep in mind the planes rotate with the model. Now the new term that we are introducing in this section is 3D views which have their own tab located here at the bottom. 3D views are the views that will appear on your 3D PDF. The only difference is that you assign your annotation views to your 3D views. This way you can capture 3D views that contain annotations on multiple planes. Think of 3D views as storage bins for your annotation views. Before beginning the organization stage, we want to adjust the text scale of our annotations. Let's right click on annotations, select details, and turn off the always display text at same size command. This setting is often used to help view annotations within SOLIDWORKS while you work, but has the ability to embed a true text scale in the background. Notice when I deactivate the checkbox, I now have the ability to select a text scale. Let's choose 3 to 2. Notice the change in the text size on my model once I apply the setting. This is very important when publishing 3D PDFs. The text scale that is seen now is the size of the text that will be published into the 3D PDF in part 4 of this series. The checkbox is in place to increase the visibility of annotations while still working on your model. For example, if I reactivate the setting, SOLIDWORKS holds the previous text scale in the background for 3D PDF publishing, but displays a text scale that is visible no matter how close or far the user zooms. I will leave the setting on until part 4 when it is time to publish a 3D PDF. When organizing PMI and capturing views for final documentation, there are two different strategies to keep in mind. One strategy is to create 3D views similar to 2D drawn views that will lay flat to the screen, like such. This strategy is useful in the event that the 3D PDF is going to be printed out as a hard copy. The second strategy of capturing 3D views is to use rotated model views with annotations on multiple planes such as isometric views, like these. This strategy helps capture the overall perception and shape of the model. Good documentation will always contain both strategies. I will now demonstrate both strategies. I'm going to start with an isometric view that contains annotations on multiple planes. I have already set my model to the desired position and now I select Capture 3D View. First I title the view, I will title it Isometric. Notice we are presented with options for configurations and display states. This allows users to capture and present models in clear and concise ways to help avoid misinterpretation. Next, we can select which annotation views to display in our 3D view. I will select all three. Once it's all set, simply click OK. Once a 3D view has been created, a thumbnail now appears within the 3D views tab. I can now rotate and change my model and always return back to this original position by double clicking the thumbnail. I will demonstrate the second strategy. For this 3D view, I want it to resemble a 2D drawing, so I will set my model to a position where it is flat to the screen. It's helpful to also center the model. To make it more like a 2D drawing, I will set the display style to hidden lines visible. Display styles will be captured into 3D views. I will now activate the front view. The active annotation view will always appear in the 3D view. Notice at the time of capturing, I can deselect the other annotation views, but the active front view cannot be deselected. It's important to always remember to activate at least one of your desired annotation views before selecting the Capture 3D View button. Once the view is all set, I will click OK. Notice that when I switch to the isometric view and back to the front view, the hidden lines display style was saved only to the front view and not the isometric. Next, we will utilize the 2D notes area and create some manufacturing instructions. Any annotations that are applied to the notes area will remain flat to the screen. This allows users to rotate the model freely while preserving the readability of important information. 
To insert a notes area, right click to denotes and insert notes area. Once the notes area has been activated, I can then add a note and I can type any necessary information that is needed to ensure the part is produced correctly. The note can be selected, moved, and edited. I can rotate the model and the note remains flat to the screen. To add the notes area to my 3D view, I will simply activate the 3D view, then activate the notes area, and then right click the thumbnail and recapture view. Now the notes area remains with the front view. A common practice used by many engineers and users is to save notes directly to the design library. If this is the case, SolidWorks MBD has the ability to drag 2D notes directly from the design library and assign them to the notes area. Once I drop the note, I simply have to reposition it to where I desire. Notice since the front 3D view already contains the notes area, when I switch to the isometric and back to the front, the note is still present. Remember, SolidWorks MBD allows users to create as many annotation views and notes areas as desired. I will now transition to an assembly to demonstrate further organizational techniques. The 2D notes area is also very useful when working with assemblies. We are going to create three main notes areas, one blank, one with assembly notes and instructions, and lastly one for a bill of materials. Utilizing a blank notes area is recommended in order to create and capture 3D views that contain no annotations, such as a general view which I will create now. Creating an assembly notes area can keep my important information organized and separated from other critical information. As shown before, I can easily insert notes directly from the design library and assign them to the notes area. Once I assign my notes to the according assembly notes area, I can easily capture them right into a 3D view. Once again, creating a separate notes area for the bill of materials will help me stay organized and separate critical information. To create a bill of materials, select the tool from the command manager. I'll select top level only and I'll leave the rest of the settings at their default setting. Once I'm all set, I click OK, and a bill of materials has been automatically generated. From here, I will simplify the bill of materials. I can control select all the columns that I do not want. I can right click, delete, column, and now my bill of materials is simplified and complete. Once our notes areas are set, it's time to demonstrate some 3D view capabilities to help show off the assembly. But first, I want to activate the blank notes area. The first capability is exploded views. Exploded views are highly useful on shop floors when assembling a product. They make for a clear and easy consumption of the assembly order and methods. I have already created my exploded configuration. Now all that has to be done is to capture a 3D view at the desired viewing angle. Once I set my angle, I simply capture the 3D view, select the blank annotation view, select the exploded view configuration, and title it accordingly. From there, I click OK, and I'm all set. The next technique for assemblies is to create section views to show off internal components in a much clearer and visually appealing manner than 2D drawings. First, I'll collapse the exploded view, I'll activate the general 3D view, and then I'll activate the section view command. First step is to title the section view, then select which plane you want to section. 
can adjust the plane however you like. I'll set it to the middle. And then for this particular assembly, I'm going to section by components. So I click to include the selected components, which means that I will be sectioning the components that I select. So I select all the outer components to expose the internal components. I can even select components from the tree. Once I've selected all the components, I'll click OK and finish the section. The last step is to adjust the view position to however you like. Select Capture 3D View. Select the blank annotation view. Entitle the 3D view accordingly. And click OK. Once our 3D view has been created, you can easily cycle through all the thumbnails. We have our exploded view, our assembly notes, our general, and lastly our section view. And with that, we have reached the end of part two. For demonstration purposes, the define and organize stages were split into two parts of this tutorial series, but a true MBD expert can greatly increase efficiency by combining the two parts and multitasking between them. In the next section, we'll be discussing the 3D PDF preparation phase.